problem. And this is one typical, typical solution for optimization problem. So when we talk about an optimization problem, which corresponded to give you an example, right? Give you an example for optimization problem. <clears throat> the mathematical example. So let's just say we have a lot of data points. And these data points, we really don't know what it is. Let's give it data points, right? Let's use this one. Use this one to see. We know our data points is kind of for in, around this this one. Can you see, right? But we really don't know what is the underlying pattern there. And especially, this is what give you two dimension, right? So if we have a three dimension, there will be like, if we have a three dimension, right? If we have three dimension, there will be like this one. And then your data may be, you know, so all the data in this way, right? So this is the data you have, and this is your data you have. And we don't know what is the formula of this one. But, so let's say this is you, what you have the function f, x, y. This is what you have the function f, x, y, z, right? Corresponding to, corresponding to these data points, this is equal to many, many of these kind of data points, right? So each data points, you have three numbers. So this is two, three, five, and they have one, one, zero, for example, right? So you have many, many this kind of data point. And the same thing here. And you have two, five, and one, one, many, many this kind of data you have. Now people ask you not only this one. People give you another function. People say, I want to say G, Y, and give another function. This is a function of this, no, what do you have the this function? For example, I give you x squared plus y squared. Well, no, y squared. And divided by x, y, right? If people give you this function, people say, this is what I have the fx. This is the search, this is the search space. So fx or fxyz are search space. The search space corresponding to, for all the data points, this is what we have the x, y value. This is what we have the x value for this three dimension, right? So how can you find out the minimize? Let's move a little bit down. To find optimal, Optimal G F G X and this optimal corresponding to minimum or maximum. And even sometimes people combine with have a minimum or maximum. So corresponding to find some boundary. And this this that is minimum maximum corresponding to some you know, tight boundary. So they wanted you to find the optimal G X Y in search space. So what is the way people want to do? Because you want to find the optimal this one, right? This one, I just gave you this example, this x, y in the two dimension and the three dimension. And you can imagine if this is real value, this is real value, right? This real value is each this number because corresponding to floating point. And in that case, what do we have the size if this is such space, the size, right? If this is such space, if we use s to represent, if the size of if the size of S, it is huge, it's very big, it's kind of infinity. In that case, to find this optimal is not easy, right? Right? If there's all this floating point here, right? So it's not easy. How the people finally can find something close to optimal results? And so this is one of the solution is called simulated annealing. And just like use a random case, right? So you pick up something, I use this one, you pick up this one, right? You randomly pick up some initialize some starting point, 
and then you check the labels and check the randomly pick up one labels and check. So how do you check? You got this data point, right? You have x, y, and you use this one to calculate the g, x, y. You calculate for, you treat this one corresponding to this search space as this paper, this search space is a solution space. Because what you want to find out, optimally this one should be stay for one of the x, y, right? So in this paper, this search space corresponding to solution space. Because your solution not beyond this search space. This is solution space corresponding to solutions. So you start from one solution here, and then they check the labels. They check labels just to say they want to jump to another data point. And they want to find out, well, maybe that is give you, based on this formula, they can give you some local optimal results, right? So it's clear. So they go to the label and they check this G, this, this is the GX1, Y1, and they go to the label and they check GX2, Y2. If this is X1, X1, Y1, this is X2, Y2. And they want to compare these two to say this value will grow, increase, or decrease. And then so they continue to check the labels and they want to see compared all this G value, they want to see get the optimal one. The smaller one or maximum one. So this solution, although this paper is published in a very good journal, but this solution take the risk. The risk it is the risk, right? Because this is kind of a random pick up the data point, random guess, random guess the initial point, random guess the labels, and use iteration to check possible iteration. Use possible, you know, 100, 1000, use a infinite number of iterations and try to explore this infinity space. And such that the results of this one, so the risk. If this one is you no know, is infinity, so we see the <clears throat> the search space is very huge, right? So we see the it takes risk. Take a risk, take a risk, and this risk corresponds to corresponds to what? Corresponds to the local optimal results. The local optimal results has been treated, has been written. So corresponding to this solution may not be global, global optimal results. It could be local optimal results. So this is the some disadvantage of this paper. And the good thing is paper corresponding to, you know, since what they calculate each on each data points. And this method really don't care about and uh, how did you have figured out this is search space? They don't care about how did you figure out search space. They totally leave it to the other user, other other programmer or other scientist. And they say just in just in case if you already have a search space, and then I wanted to find the optimal results for you. And even for finding these optimal results, which have the risk to be the local results, the local optimal results. Right? And so this is something disadvantage from this side. And this paper was do not prove. They gave that say they say they wanted to avoid that. To avoid that, they claim they wanted to have the temperature. Temperature corresponding, they used the one specific example. So think about the crystal, right? You make a crystal, let's say the Use this one as an example. If you have a, you know, difficulty understand what they talk about temperature, allergy, and also what they talk about this one, you think about the crystal. So, and, um, especially, you know, you know, the, some industry, some people, they make the glass, right? They make the vase, they make the vase, right? They make the vase for the people put the flowers inside, right? And this vase, then sometimes they can make it very, very delicate. 
and the process of making this glass or crystal vase is in a way first put in a very high temperature, and then suddenly let it when temperature dropping down. When the dropping down, it will quickly you know get cold and you know solid you know to make the shape, make the shape shape of the vase, and in such a way you know it can get some specific uh, you know finally you know stable status. And that is final stable status is what we say the vase, right? So the use the, the this author use this one as an example. For us, underlying mechanism is what I explain here. Searching the search space and you know first first start with initial initial you know, uh, solution, initial data point, and from the search space and check the labels, a little bit of check the labels, right? So you can imagine if they check the labels. Since they check labels in this site, they can find the local optimal results. And they want to say, you know, they want to explore more and explore different case, different, you know, related labels and can you explore it out? And they hope with hope find the good optimal results. This is the general, this is simulated anemic, so, no, algorithm. This simulated linear algorithm is not designed by them. It's designed by many other people. They already use that. This, this is a typical optimal you know, computational algorithm to solve an optimization problem. Okay, so just be aware of that. Okay, now before I move forward to tell you the specific connection between the simulated and linear, I want to ask you. We also have Gun here, the uh, deep Gun, deep deep Gun here. So just let me know, Gun, how are you? How are you, Gil? So it seems it's muted. Okay. So um, for this part, for this regular, this you know very generous solution. How do you think? It's clear, not clear. Vashali, clear. Right? What? Okay. Good. So now then, okay. Very good. Very good. Then in that case, I want to move to the uh, this uh, this paper, right? This paper is go to the um, the this paper. And then, so um, when you read this paper, most important is to check the methodology side. When you take a look at something else, so you can you no, know, you can ignore if that is you know the biological term. If you do not want to, if it's, it's hard to understand for the biological term, you can totally ignore. So now I'm going to discuss about this part, okay? So about the algorithm part and explain that. Okay, I'm going to here. Okay, and then so um, first let's check after we talk about the you know simulated annealing the you know general algorithm for optimization problem. Now let's go back to the problem currently we work on, which is let work alignment, and this is the extended version of sequence alignment, right? And we already discussed sequence alignment and the sequence alignment, which is compare two sequences. And trying to find out the common subsequence, right? Okay, let's use this kind of. So let's see what is the problem formulation of this light work alignment. So let work alignment corresponded to given two graphs and we use the G1 to represent one graph and we use G2 to represent another graph. Usually graph include three connections, vertices, edges and weights. This weights on the edge weights, right? It's a weight on the edge. And we also have G2 equal to V2, E2, and W2. I give you a very general representation, and such that you can find out, you know, use this one to see how this paper can be, can be, or oh no, refined, can be no oh no better, right? So give this one, and to find network element is to find, to find a mapping, right? And to find a, Best mapping.
This mapping is from from what? From V one to V two. This is this paper to tell. Usually we talk about is G one to G two. Corresponding to not only when you compare two networks, and we wanted to say the not only the loads can be mapped, and also relationship between the loads can also be mapped, right? But this paper that emphasizes V one, you no know, the vortex mapping a lot. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we have G one, right? Let's say G one, and this G one include. I just give you. Arbitrary network include four vertices. And G2 include more vertices. Usually when we talk about two graph, usually one graph bigger than another one, right? So um, let's say G2 consists with Let's just say consist with that could be a very complicated one. This is the some example not appear in the paper, and but uh, you know it's good example. For example, this one, right? G two. So we want to find the best mapping. Here the question is best, and also this mapping you can treat this mapping as the injective function. This mapping. Corresponding to injective function. If we use f to represent, and corresponding to f from v one to, usually we use this one to represent to v two. And so, since the court talk about best mapping corresponding to, we would like to have, you know, what we have that this f should give you the best score, right? So, corresponding to, if they, if some way you want the score of f, score of f is, if you consider the similarity, it should be the best, should be optimal. So this question exactly which is the optimization question, and then so the search space for this one, right? Let's see. So this one you can see this is have four vertices, and this have four vertex vertices, and this one have you know line vertices, right? Line vertices. So when you map this, the, the vertices from here to here, they really do have many many solutions, right? Right, because for example, this one can be mapped to here, and this one can map to here, and this one can be mapped to here. This one can map to here. It's just one solution, right? And then you could have mapped in this way. For example, this one go to here, and this one go to here, and this one go to here, and this one go to here. Right? So this is different kind of mapping, but you want to make make sure and the the score of this f should be highest one, and such that the question: How do you define this score, right? How this score? What is this score? What is this score? This is the first thing, right? And the second thing it is, since this is the optim optimization problem, and the search space for this one corresponding to each this vertex can be mapped to. All different places, and so the search space. Let's just say search space, right? And think about search space. If you have a four vertices mapped to line vertices, how many possibility could be four mapped to here? So corresponding to from from. Line you choose a four, and then this four you can permutate it, permutate it, right? Now if this is n, if this is m, and we say n is smaller than m, and the search space corresponding to 
this one is equal to p line 4, right? And then in this case, you correspond it to m choose n and the same time n factorial. This is a search space. And the search space corresponding to this also corresponding to permutate m n. Okay, so this is such space, each the such space here corresponding to one type of mapping. Just like what we have this this orange lines and all these green lines. This is just an example. And you can find that more this kind of mapping could be. And such that in this paper, the contribution for this paper, it is usually you see in many another paper, they just say, you know, go through the graph algorithm to just to find out, you know, which one mapping is good, right? And this one, they say, okay, let's say I don't care about how did you find this, uh, how did you define this scoring? You now this paper say we don't care about how did you this define this scoring? And once you have this kind of mapping, this alignment search space, then we can use a simulated linear algorithm, right? And so this reason, they emphasize this one a lot, a lot. In that algorithm, they show the, this similar, simulated linear in the search space. And so this is actually the three, right? It's a, you know, SA method. It's SA method. This is the paper's very important set. And then the search space here corresponding to how they find another, you know, um, labels, right? And they call the labels. And corresponding to what we talk about, find another very close, very another data points, another x, y you want to explore, right? The idea here it is you want to explore the whole search space, whole search space. And of course, it's not possible because this search space is infinity data points. So you want to approximately or roughly explore this such space in the way, you know, you can find out some, you know, relatively optimal results. So this is something we, in the last class of this semester, we want to check with you after we finish P, NP, NP complete, NP hard. Then we say, how we solve problem and for this NP complete, NP hard. And we use the approximation algorithm and the technique is the same as what we teach in class. Grady algorithm, dynamic programming. Okay, or interactive solution. So now I'm going to talk about the relationship and between this formulation with simulated linear algorithm. Okay, and then so before we move to that, so let's just say how the uh, author defined, right? And also defined the... Um, they define the temperature, temperature, temperature scale, schedule. This is in the paper, so I wanted to you know, briefly introduce that because in the formula, they use that. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about, you know, how to link it together, right? Gave you these two graphs, and how can you and use this simulated linear, you know, any uh, linear this uh, solution to solve this problem. So the words, what they do, they need to find out, they need to define initial mapping, right? Since initial, initial mapping, it's just random pick up one initial mapping. Just like you choose one of these orange, either orange or green. And you choose that. After you choose that, and so, you know, allow you to find the label, label data points. Label data points correspond to another closed alignment. So the, the user, the author choose two method, right? So define initial, define a uh, solution, define the search space, right? And the search space here corresponding to the paper talk about the solutions. And you know, most important for this paper and the was a claim, which is the And the corresponding to the also talk about important side, which is the initial alignment. Because this is such a space corresponding to alignment space. Corresponding to how many alignments could be, right? 
This corresponds to what we talk about here. How, you know, so many is kind of lemons. Then this corresponds to the, all the vertices mapped to, you know, another vertices in the G2. And also they allow one to map, one to many mapping. It's one to many mapping. So corresponding to even these two can be mapped to the same vertex. So they even make this one even the more search space. Okay. So, um, okay, then I move forward. So it's such that since the search space, search space include the alignment space. So each corresponding to each data point is alignment. This alignment corresponding to what we talk about this function, right? Is all the V1, the vortex, to another vortex, what it says in the V2. So initial alignment. Initial alignment, this step, the author just randomly do that. So corresponding to just pick up first four elements in the, no, no, in the graph, graph two, right? Just pick up the, no, any first four vertices as initial point. And after that, after that, after that, so define the search space, also define how to find, how to find label data point. How to find the label the late the label solution or label data point is you can exchange them or label alignment right in the search space. And so this is the the things the also now emphasize. Okay. And then, so how do you find that? So the also define, because you need to find the labels, right? The labels, just like the here we mentioned, you need to find labels in this way. If that is the X, Y, or X, Y, Z, easy to find, because you increase X, Y, Z, or decrease, right? You have, you know, based on deviation, so you have a different way you can go, right? If this is a X, Y, two dimension, you have a four way to go, right? And if you have the four way, it will depend on the, the, the scale you make, right? So if you want the 0 0.5, right, this was allowed, you know, on the then so X, Y, Z, you have uh, more spaces to go, right? You have eight space, you know, eight next to the label point, right? So um, then, so in the, in the this one, they consider the label, label solution, and label solution include two cases. Either one, the also, the also, also randomly pick up. So why is it called, why is it called what? The change label. I want to explain what is corresponding to this one. Then we're going to go to the formula, go to the algorithm. And the second one corresponding to swap label. And for this one, I want to use some, you know, simple case, swap, swap label. Okay, and then let's explain that since this is very important for this paper. So um, for this one, I wanted to use even a simple case, so which include the last data point. So let's just say the paper mentioned this is the U for U3 and this is the U1 and U2, for example. This is from G1, right? From G1. And then you have G2. And the G2, let's make it even simple. So you have this one and this one, this one. And then you go to the here and go to the here, right? So you have V1, V2, and V3, and V6, V6, V4, V5, V4, for example, random, right? Okay, give random and no label. So let's just say initialize one of the mapping current status. The mapping it is the V4 U4 map to here, right? The F. The F here now corresponding to the U4 go to the V5. And also the U3 go to the so U3 go to the V3 and U2 
go to the this one right and this one we didn't give the symbol here this is v2 right and then we have uh, this one mapped here this is the some status okay some mapping status so corresponding to you have uh, u3 go to v3 and you have uh, u2 go to the v2 and you have uh, u1 go to the v1 right so this is the f this mapping currently so the label mapping f prime right f prime f prime so here f prime let's say you could be change neighbors corresponding to no from this four this mapping pairs you randomly pick up one you say okay let's say this u4 loop not mapped here i use different kind to represent this change so no u4 not mapped here u4 map to this guy right so in that case, what you have the this new mapping will be U4 map to V4, right? This is a change, change, the change label, but change label, change label corresponding to it is the you know find the next label, this next label based on change the mapping pair, and then it's all the remaining one which the keep the same. You just change one mapping pair. And this is u2 go to v2 right then you have u1 go to the v1 right so this is just one example to show you this is based on the change label let's use a to represent so this is a right and also you have four pairs randomly pick up one and change the labels to another any kind of vertex so also in this paper keep in mind this paper is Although they publish in the best journal, but many problem there. And so they allow randomly choose. And they randomly choose from this G2. Corresponding to when you choose this one, this one may be also mapped to use V3. It's also allowed. So the paper, the algorithm, if you go to the code and you know, check that, if the code is exactly same as this shooter code, the logically. Then that means they really do have lots of a problem there. So you no, know, the author didn't you know exactly you know to argue you know to put it uh, clarify that. So this is one to many mapping in data paper. So they allow randomly pick up these four pairs, randomly pick up one, and then change the this target, the mapping target to only one of this one. They don't care about what it is the you know, specific uh, you know status could be. They already mapped or not mapped. They don't care. They just randomly pick up one and to to sign to that. So corresponding this green line can be signed from V U four maybe to V three again. Can you see that they just randomly pick? Okay, so they make it such in a simple way, but you know no many problem there. Now let's take a look the. Um, the swap, what is corresponding swap, right? Swap label. So this corresponding to this corresponding to um from these four pairs, randomly pick up two, randomly pick up two, random pick up two to switch, right? For example, U3 map to V3, U2 map to V2. This now let's change the target, the map the target in the this way. Right? And such that what the label alignment, right? This is alignment corresponding to the pair of the pair of the map, the mapping pairs. And so this is one possible operation. This is another possible operation. Both is to find the next solution. Because they needed to, from all these mapping solutions, find the one which could be optimal results. Could be has you know, give you maximum alignment score. So um, then, so after this change in you know, a label, they will have uh, let's say this is U four and go to let's keep what they have the orange right. We see this is different operation. So go to the, this is the same as U five V five and then you have U uh, three go to V two, and you have U uh, two go to V three and then you have what you have U one go to the V one, right? So this is the mapping pairs mapping pairs. Okay, so this is a two, two, two options the user use to find the next label, right? This is find the 
label solution was corresponding to find the next label, find the next, uh, next uh, data point to search, to explore, right? Find the next uh, data point in search space. So sometimes people use different term. Once we go to the search space, we see data points. And the people so we say this is solution space, then this is solution. Okay, so um, find the next, you no, know, since we want to make it more general, so find the next data point to explore, right? Okay, so this is the what the author mentioned is two optional optional um operations you can use for finding the next uh, label. And then, so for these two, what the user do it is random pick. Random pick from these two, and then random pick up and how which pair to swap, or random pick up which, you no know, mapping the pair to change the target, right? If this is a target mapping target mapping source, right? This is mapping source, and this is the mapping target, right? So the user what they do random pick, right? Random pick, okay. And we say still they have problem, right? They have problem. Now let's just say. Mm, in the no, since this is a simulated uh, nearly, and such that, so we see the uh, no, the optimization in the in the simulated nearly. They talk about if the energy go to the smallest one, then in that case the status go to the stable, right? So just like we talk about the vest, you know, make it a vest, and only when the temperature, you know, drop and drop and drop to not to drop again, go to the, you know, stable temperature, and then also corresponding to the allergy, go to the stable, called the steady, called the steady status. The steady status should have a steady allergy energy distribution. So it corresponds to the some smallest energy in the distribution. In the energy distribution. Or oh, you know, it's just a, so from another from dynamic from dynamic system perspective, the user uses something this is from dynamic the systems. Dynamic system people use this kind of term. When you say the making, making a crystal vase, and this is the dynamic procedure, right? Because they should, you know, temperature should you know, increase, decrease. Of course, in the beginning, it needed to increase, and finally, it decrease. And then finally, you got, you know, got the good shape of the, of the crystal vase, right? So this is the making a crystal mass. For example, and such that they talk about since they use this kind of dynamic system as an example, and they have energy here. So the user uses some term, and then the algorithm they also use this term. But finally, and we will check these terms actually corresponding to some calculation, some functions. We you know correspond to a lot of alignment. Some another term, some another term related to this dynamic system. And first one is the let's use the this color temperature. The temperature here is also called temperature scheduling. Schedule. So in this temperature schedule, So it's determine the decline of uh, probability to accept uh, what's the solution. So it doesn't matter how they claim, this one is equal to for each iteration, right? So because if they want to check for each data point, when you explore and you want to check what is the possibility, this can give you the, the some optimal results. So the formula you to check this one corresponding to, you know, uh, the related to this term is not a, Probability is not from this term, but related to this term. And so Ti is equal to K and E negative, no, I. So this K and lambda, I want to explain that. 
K and lambda. These two, you just treat them as the treat them as the treat them with what? As the you know parameter. Or let's say you treat them as the free parameter. In that case, in the paper, they do not give you very detailed discussion how parameter. In the paper, they do not give you very you know, good discussion about how they find this one. They just say T0. And I explain I. I correspond to iterations and also correspond to number of data points. I use this one corresponding to the also also correspond to number of data points. Being explored, right? This is I. So corresponding to the when you t zero corresponding to very beginning, right? Very beginning of exploration before you, you know go to the early iteration. It's corresponding iteration zero, right? So t zero is equal to k because i zero this is one. So this is equal to zero. So initializing that one. So the also they just give you arbitrary input for k, but actually you can think about how can you define this better k and lambda. This paper have lots of problem if you want to prove, and then so um, this is a k right, and also the the um, <coughs> lambda the people the the also claim lambda it is um, how fast the temperature approach zero. How fast the temperature you no know, approach to zero? For us, we really don't think this is the some very meaningful term. Approach zero. So you can imagine it is you know when the temperature approaches zero and also corresponding to the came lambda in the end in the end status the temperature the, the allergy should also the all this allergy you know should close to also zero. So um, this is the message, right? It's just say my computer is not fast. How fast the temperature approach zero? My computer is not fast. So this is reason they you know, when I write it down, they didn't appear. Then I write it again, and then suddenly they appear both. Okay. So and the some term and uh, this term is not so important in this case. Most important is this one. Because this one, they use this TI. So we talk about that one first. E, this is E, delta E divided by TI. So this corresponding to, this corresponding to this delta. Data. This is corresponding to the probability. Let me explain. Let's explain what is this, uh, what is this uh, E, right? E corresponding to the simulated system corresponding to the allergy. In our network alignment, corresponding to mapping score. Mapping score. Or this mapping score will correspond to you know mapping criteria and which is major which correspond to another one the major satisfied 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 mapping criteria also correspond to that in the in the author. Was when they also talk about in this way, they talk about in a way to say how to measure the quality of alignment. It's the same. So in this paper, they mention this one is allergy. This allergy in this network alignment corresponds to mapping score. Okay, because we want to find the best mapping. 
And so in that case, we wanted to find this mapping, you know, continue and continue until we find the best mapping. So this is what we treat the end in this dynamic system. That, what, that is what we check the allergy. So E corresponds to mapping score in you know, this case. Although the good author in the description, they use allergy as the term. Okay. And then so the delta E, as this name tell you, corresponds to the difference. of mapping score between F to between between F2 and F1 F2 and F1 uh, which corresponds to to mapping, right? Since the search space is mapping space, mapping search space, and such that, so each data point here is mapping, is F1, is F2, right? Corresponding to what we talk about here, the, the pairs, these pairs, these kind of pairs, right? F1, F2, right? So this is the third E corresponding to the difference, the score difference between F2 and F1. Corresponding to, for example, previous example, right? F F prime with F, or F you no know, double prime with F is the same, okay? And then so um, this one corresponding to the P, this delta E T I corresponding to the probability probability of the F two. We see F2 is the, the recent, this is the previous, previous, this is the previous mapping. And this is the new mapping, right? After this change label or swap label, and this is what you have the new mapping. So it's the probability F2 being best one. The probability of this one. F2. F2 being, being the best one. Okay, so this is a probability. They use this term. And take a look at this term. If delta E big, right? And the delta E, the difference, when we talk about difference, is absolute difference. Absolute difference. And so when we talk about difference, it's absolute difference. So in this case, this delta E is negative number or positive number depending on what you claim here, right? So the, if the best score, best alignment score should be score higher. You know, some lot of you know, solution, it is used distance. Then that in case it's this distance should be smaller, then it's more similar, right? Or similar. So in that case, it is you want to have, a, you know, very, you know, the Big difference, the probability if this big difference is big, right? So it's more possible, you know, what you get is best score, right? So just probability. And then, so if you have this TI, they use this TI because it's time corresponding, you know, the name as the temperature schedule. So, you know, in this case, you just use this one to adjust, to adjust, you know, to say, you know, and for each iteration, from this iteration to next iteration, how do you judge this? possible to this search space and to check the probability. The goal of this one just for check the probability. So if you say this term, why they use temperature schedule, this term is so weird. You don't need to care about it too much. It's just say this is a dynamic system and this dynamic system not exactly follow normal distribution. They follow some larger distribution. This distribution, if you use this, this formulas, they get give you better this, you know, probability results. Let's just follow this one. And in this algorithm, really this, this formula is a typical simulated annealing formulas for this, uh, and, you know, for this P probability, it's quite normal. So let's just use this one. Now let's say, first let's take a look, the next step, right? Next step, let's say the algorithm, and then let's say how the user define this uh, 
define this E, right? Define this E. How they define this mapping score, right? So let's see here. Okay. So the next step, let's take a look. The SANA algorithm. And this algorithm exactly are the here. This algorithm mentioned, right? Here. So let's see if I copy this one. Can I, can I copy this one? So let's copy this one, then I paste here. And so I want to paste here. Let's see, can I do that? Maybe not. That's not a nice. Can I paste? Yes, yeah, can. That's good. So let's see here, right? Then I want to explain that. Then we want to explain the score, how to calculate the score. So keep in mind, so what they have this F and the F here. You treat them as this delta e, right? You treat them as delta e since this is delta e, this f corresponding to alignment score. It's okay, alignment score, right? This f are corresponding to a a corresponding alignment, and f here corresponding alignment score. Use this f. What we correspond to this f function? Corresponding to this f function, now which you finally results of this one go to the specific score, right? The summarize the score. Let's let's say a little bit difference here, right? Before we see this f is mapping, and here they use a to represent one mapping results. Use f to represent the e to represent the score. This f is the same as what we talk about the e, the, the calculation, the mapping score. Score. Okay. Okay, then so um, first, let's say here, right? And in this one, have input. In this input, G1, G2, and F, F corresponding to how they calculate the mapping score. So corresponding to the function, function, right? F, let's say F, the mapping score function. Or mapping scoring. Okay. Mapping scoring, right? And also eight zero, eight zero corresponding to eight zero corresponding to what? Initial alignment. Initial alignment, as we talk about, just randomly pick up a four in the V two map to V one. So this is initial. So this is a very heuristic method. So initial, initial alignment. Eight zero. And then T maximum corresponding to the setup, how no how how long you need to because they corresponding to time to reach to some lumbo, then they want to stop. They want to stop uh, go to the next uh, iteration. So you no, know, uh, they use this one, use this T to represent, you can see here, the stop condition. And for this one, you also need to check that this T is based on I, T function we already talked about, right? And T is equal to T I is equal to, equal to, equal to what? K E negative lambda I, right? Did you remember, right? This is the, what way is I, right? The iteration, K, yes, right? So um, this is a T. And so the T maximum is constant. So, you know, every time you, you go to different iteration, you get this T execute. This is a TI. This is a TI. So they say that if this one is a smaller T, T maximum, that's fine. If it's larger than this one, then you stop. And also when the I increase, I increase, so this will be reduced, right? This will be reduced. Can you see that? If I increase, I increase, I increase, let's use this one to rep represent I increase. 
I increase. If lambda, if lambda is constant, lambda is positive, and k is positive, in that case, ti and is supposed to be dropped down, right? So in that case, when you take a look at the code, take a look at what is this k and the lambda they choose. In this paper, they didn't specify this k and the lambda. Even no, no, you can check the. I take a look at the method function, method section. This is what they didn't claim which number they use. They're supposed to use, and just be aware of that. They use this one as the stop condition. If it's larger or equal to, there's the up the given input t maximum. They stop, and then go to the iteration. Most important is this iteration side, right? In this iteration, for each iteration, corresponding to explore for one thing, right? And so, so it's starting from the initial, then you want to find the labels, right? They find the label, and I find the label lex. Let's just say we do not see lex. Just say the label. The label solution or label alignment. Right, label alignment, and find this label alignment same as what we talk about. Randomly pick up, randomly pick up, uh, you know, from change label or swap label. And if if it's change label, you randomly pick up this uh, pairs, mapping pairs, and change choose one and assign the target to any you no know, other other you know vertex in the V two or the swap randomly, randomly swap two mapping pairs and find the label. And once you have found the label, you sign this label, right? Because in the beginning here, a it is a corresponding alignment. Find the alignment, find the label alignment, sign to be a prime. And then after that, calculate, calculate mapping score. Calculate mapping score. Calculate the mapping score for a prime and a, and so this results the difference, right? Mapping this one and also the get the difference, and this difference sign to be this is the first step, the second step in the iteration, right? Sign to delta e, and after that it is. If data e is larger than zero, corresponding to a is better. No, if a prime, if data e larger than zero or equal to zero, in this case both they consider. If larger or equal to zero, in that case, uh, no a prime is a better solution. It's a better solution, right? It's a better solution. And since it's a better solution, and the user, the 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 user, they just put the i a to a prime as the a for the next iteration. They want to compare compare this guy, or else, or else, and or else the user claim claim the this uh, this a a prime with probability this a prime with probability of this one to be a worse con no worse no worse solution. So then the claim this should be, or the claim this is just a claim. Claim the a claim is a prime to be some solution. Claim to be a solution. Possibly some. A solution possibly good, possibly good, possibly good, with probability. So this as probability, probability it is use this p, is p delta e, and this ti. Use this one to calculate the probability. And so since this method is a uh, is is called a meta heuristic. And such that when you run that, you may every time you get a solution may be different. 
So only this solution may not be enough. This is what I think. But you know, still they publish in the best uh, journal. So so maybe the experiment part is quite attractive. They compare you know, the with two very famous uh, two algorithms. Okay, and then so um, this part is clear, not clear. If this part is clear, I want to go to the the, the how they have this uh, E this score or how they have this F here, right? Mapping scoring. What is this mapping scoring? And then I want to go there. Any questions so far? Thank you, thank you. Then so um, green. Okay, same thing. Muted. Okay, good. So now I'm continue. I wanted to go to the uh the math the scoring side, right? This is the mapping scoring. And the mapping scoring here in this paper, they give the uh the users or engineers more space to explore. Actually, they just mentioned they have different way and they can combine. They can combine different uh, components to make this scoring function. And so they, they describe this component, scoring component. So let's write it down here. So this is the mapping scoring and it specifically is a component. Not use uh, it, you can you can use combination of uh, all the, this uh, this uh, this uh, scoring scoring component, and uh, you also mentioned the different things. Why it is uh, edge covering, and also corresponding to this corresponding to edge covering. Corresponding to when you check a mapping score, you want to say how this mapping, how good this mapping could be, right? So this is mapping score. How good it? Because you want to, you know, just like you want to sell something, right? And you have to say, you know, um, compare this one with this close with another close. How good this close could be? And the same thing here. They mention different uh, criteria to measure the quality of alignment. And also they use this quality, you know, quantify this quality and to make it as the, the E or this F from the algorithm, right? So the E C is corresponding to the edge, this is edge, edge coverage, also called, some other people call, this is called the edge correctness. Okay, so for the edge correctness, there has specific uh, uh, function. So this function, let's say we use E, A, right? E, A, corresponding to E A corresponding to A corresponding to mapping and um, E corresponding to the edge covering and also you can treat them as the allergy, right? Also we talk about the allergy in the very beginning and also corresponding to this delta E, delta E corresponding difference of E, right? So corresponding to the measure of the of the the mapping score, the mapping quality. So this is equal to equal to Equal to what? Equal to U V, which is belong to E one. Since it talk about coverage, and later they will use the sides, right? Since you talk about coverage, coverage is this concept corresponding to some collection cover something, right? Cover something is sub sub range. So they want to check how many vertices in the E one has been mapped to mapped to. Which is belong to E two. So this is also claim the edge covering, and it's corresponding to count how many edges in V in the G one has been found the mapping edges in the in the E two in the E two. Okay. So this is the edge covering, 
And then so the author also mentioned that so corresponding to the scoring, the scoring here, the scoring, this F, right? Scoring F of A, A corresponding to one mapping is equal to the size of EA, right? Okay, the scoring is F, we use F to represent, right? This is one of the F, uh, F1. So this F1, let's use capital F to separate the, what we talk about in the beginning, right? We use capital F. And also this paper, let's just say this paper, they use capital F, right? This capital F, okay? So such that, you know, they will be making it, uh, you know, unique or else in the paper was confusing they also have a small f and then later they talk about the e and they talk about delta e and now they couldn't go back to here to f so this is some of the reason you may feel you know, confused so this is kept f let's use the same it's also kept f right so let's make sure this is clear let me erase this one first okay then i use the capital f and I use capital F1 because it's just one method, right? So then second fun, second method, so this one and this two, right? The different component, scoring component. And the second one, that the author claimed that, which is corresponding to, corresponding to semantic. Substructure. Score. This is semantic. Semantic substructure score. And the user use S3 to represent, right? You can treat them as the is S3. You can treat them just like uh, it's F2, right? F2 score. So F3, as I say, F3 is F2A. And equal to the also mentioned is S3A. And this is equal to EA. EA corresponds to the coverage, right? The coverage here. The, the coverage here, EA, right? And divided by, divided by, divided by total E1. plus EA hat minus EA. And if you take a look at both, the only thing change is in the, this is defined EA, this is defined uh, this one, right? Define this one. Yeah, I think I need to change this one a little bit. So the uh, score of this one is equal to, in the paper, they mention it is EA, and which is equal to the size of EA, the edge coverage, divided by E1. So I'm sorry, I, at this part I, I forgot, I just thought about it's the size of EA, and also it is divided by E1, because they needed to get to normalize the Normalize the edge covering. This has got to normalize the edge covering. This is adjusted normalized coverage. So EA, you can see EA, this guy, right? This guy is equal to, they change a little bit of description. And so this is corresponding to in the edge, in the, in the E, in the graph two, they want to check how many of this graph two, the corresponding edge has been mapped. And you know, then so, this is the exact U1 and V1 belong to capital V1. And also, also, also the mapping of U1 is equal to U2. It's equal to U2. And, and the mapping of U2 the mapping of, mapping of what? Mapping of, uh, mapping of uh, V1, V1, and which is equal to U1. And so, so this is the description. 
And this corresponds to if we take a look, take a look, give you example, right? Give you example, let's give you example. Also give you random, you no, know, let's say give you example from, that's far away. Let's just give draw here. So this is still, we have this uh, four, this four loads, right? And so when we're mapping here, and let's say we we'll draw this guy, right? And also draw this guy. And so the mapping here corresponds to this guy as mapped to here. And this guy mapped to here. And this guy mapped to here. And this guy mapped to here, right? So in that case, EA, the EA, EA will be corresponding to the mapping. This edge, they cannot, this edge, cannot find the mapping edges here, right? This edge can find the mapping edge here. This one can find the matching up here. So this is a three, this is a three. This is, this is the size of this one is a three, right? And then when you go to the EA pram, and EA pram in this case, let's see here, right? Let's see we change a little bit. EA pram, so what is EA pram? E prime corresponding to you want the all these edges in E2. How many of these edges you find the mapping here? So in this case, there will be also three, right? Now let's change this one a little bit. Let's change it. Um, If we change it to this case, so this green line, no, so this one, right? This one and and um, and this one and this one, right? So in that case, for the this part corresponding to three, and then this one will be corresponding to corresponding to what? So this edge you find the mapping, and uh, or the another edge you cannot find the mapping, right? You only have one. You only have one. Can you see that? You only have one. And then so so they use this one minus this one. And then in such a case, you know, this will be increased, right? So in this the user want to see this is a different way to do that, right? So if you emphasize so the mapping results in the E2 or mapping results in the E1, in that case results is different. So this is a symmetric substructure score. So this is user claim. And then, so let's take a look at the third solution, the third solution, the third in the scoring solution. And this is the also name us weighted, almost that we're almost finished here. The edge is you no know, coverage. This is a coverage, right? And it's the also use the WEC. And so, so what do you have the F? The method, F method, right? This is the scoring, and it's equal to WEC, and give you mapping. And also claim that this is the consider sequence alignment. So first of them, they need to divide by number of E1, the size of number of the edges. And also the, for this one, you consider for each mapping results. So all this EU, and V, these edges belong to what you have the mapping, you know, this mapping coverage, right? Edge coverage. If you that consider edge coverage, then you check the similarity of U1, the U similarity of U with mapping U plus similarity of V alpha v and similarity add them together divided by two so this is called weighted weighted corresponding to all the previous solution they just check how many you no know, is counted how many map the edges is you no know, how many counted uh, no mapping edges here it was considered similarity let's explain 
S U one V one, right? S U one V one V one U one V one is equal to sequence alignment. And the sequence alignment is the same as what we discussed in class U U one and V one. And U one belong to capital V one and uh, V one belong to capital V two corresponding to the vertices in graph in the graph two. So this is the okay. So the this is the third solution, third you know, component, the scoring component. And then so um, for the scoring part, they also also mention the topology you node know, site. But for topology, let's say for you know, this this F3, right? F3. Okay. And then finally, then the user combined this one, you know, this all this together. And they they use the scoring, it's a scoring. Scoring A, that the follow scoring, alignment scoring. And this is the follow, follow this F. It's follow F. It's the score, right? Score. Well, let's say use E to represent. And this score is equal to 1 minus. Let's use the, the author. Let's use the beta to represent. In the paper, they use alpha. And since you know this is quite you know, similar to the what we have a, so uh, let's separate them. And so this is the s. This is not s. This is the what we have the you no know, f, f i. And then so alpha plus plus the beta, and what we have to this s, s a. And this S A is a sequence S A corresponding to sum up all, right? Sum up all. So let's say let's use this uh, use capital S and A. Capital S A corresponding to the beta, which is a free parameter. Free parameter corresponding to you know um they can use uh, the the author can give you any number initial value number or just give you arbitrary number or even the paper they want to run many many times to find a better w find better beta right free parameter and this capital is capital s a and corresponding to summation of summation of all the mapping all the mapping this is alignment right corresponding mapping so all the, this you know, u1 v1 u1 v1 and uh, which is belong to is alpha, right? Belong to is mapping. You want to check the sequence similarity, sequence alignment, sequence alignment of u and v. If you use one, right? If you have one here, so u one v one, for example. Then in that case, it is this is what we have. This f or mention. You can choose either one, or you sometimes you can also put the compilation was also fine, right? And then you get this e. And use this e, put it in the algorithm, put in this algorithm as this, uh, this here, this e here, e here, right? E or f here. It's clear or not clear? It's delta e because it's delta e, of course, it's e, right? So use e or you know use f. It's also fine. Capital F. I think once we go here, we you know make this algorithm. Each step is quite clear now. Any questions so far?